Greetings everyone, this is Brad Wistance. I've received quite a few requests recently to do a tutorial on how to build space planes. This will be a step-by-step -step walkthrough. Anyone who's interested in learning how to build a space plane can build and play along with me. You will not need any mods to do so. This is done in Kerbal Space Program 1.05. I will make reference to several mods that I do have installed and I'll point out why I use them but I'll make sure that I don't do anything that can't be done without these mods. I hope that you enjoy, and if you have any questions as you're making it through, just please ask me in the comment section. Our goal with this space plane is to keep things as simple and as easy to fly as possible. We're going to go to a stable orbit around Kerbin and come back down and land on the runway. It's going to be manned, and it's going to carry a useful cargo. We're going to put in a little ion probe with us. We're going to start with the rapier engine. We're going to use one rapier engine because this is the easiest design. We can use this one engine to both be an air breathing engine at low altitude and it turns into a conventional rocket engine at higher altitude. We're going to use the MK2 adapter long. It is more aerodynamic than the shorter one. We'll need somewhere to put our cargo so we'll have the smaller cargo bay and the same long adapter on the front. Now it may be tempting to want to use the MK1 cockpit, however you notice that it has a very low max temperature. So we can still use the MK1 inline cockpit, but we're going to, that way we can put a nose cone on the front, which has a higher max temperature, and won't burn up when we're re-entering. So that is our main fuselage already there. Next I'm going to put in our payload. What you decide to put in here is not important. We just want to put something in here that is useful so we can say this is a practical design. Now I'm going to put the payload towards the back of the cargo bay because that is helpful for stability and weight distribution, which I'll talk more about later. This is going to be the ion probe, so we need the ion fuel tank, the probe core, which needs to be flipped around so it's facing the same way, the reaction wheel, and the electric el engine. Now let's give this some batteries. And let's give it some antennas too. You don't really need, but maybe you're doing a contract with them, I don't know. Now to have enough solar power to power this, we'll need six of the 1x6 panels around Kerbin. If you go out to Duna, it's um, off the top of my head, I think three or four times that. And if you go farther in, you need less. If you go past Duna, it becomes entirely impractical to run the electrical engine off of solar panels when you go past Duna. Alright, our payload looks good. Now that we're done with the payload, we can see our mass is a little under 14 tons. With one rapier engine, the most mass we could theoretically have is somewhere around 21 tons. We don't want to push that limit because we want to keep this simple and easy to fly. So let's try to keep this under 17 or 18 tons. Next is going to be the wings. We want about 20% of the mass of our craft in tons in relative wing area. So the biggest wing strikes that we're going to use have one. We're going to be a little under 20 tons, so let's say 20 tons times 20%. We're going to need four of these. And that'll give us a little extra. Doesn't really matter where we put these for now. We're going to be balancing the lift later. And put those on in mirrored mode. Next step is to add the control surfaces. This is a small space plane, so we're going to use these small elevons, the Elevon 4. If you mount them to the wing, you can get strange angles. It's easier just to mount them to the engine, which we know has a straight line. That looks pretty good, and we'll add a rudder. You could do without a rudder but it'll just make it a little more controlled, so why not? 
And we could add the landing gear now, but let's do that after we balance out the mass on this. Actually, I've changed my mind. Let's do it now. Shocker, the center of mass is roughly in the center. So we're going to do a tricycle landing gear. Now it's very important that the landing gear is on exactly straight. If it's not on exactly straight, your craft will wobble all over the place or veer off the runway. It might be tempting to put a small camber on it because it looks stable, but it is not stable. And you'll crash and die or shoot your eye out. You could leave them all the way on the bottom. I like to clip them up a little bit to give you a sleeker look. Again, if you don't want to, that's absolutely fine. It'll fly fine just the way it placed at the beginning. So let's put that a little bit down. We don't want tail strikes when we're landing. All right, now we need to s make sure our craft is stable. This is probably the single biggest thing I see people do wrong with space planes. It's very important that the center of lift is behind the center of mass, but you don't want it to be too far behind the center of mass. The closer the center of lift is to the center of mass, the more maneuverable your craft is and the more fuel efficient it is because it can fly through the air better and you're generating less drag to get the same lift and you don't need to use the control surfaces as much to keep the nose up, which again makes you more aerodynamic. Now I've almost forgot something that I've forgotten quite a few times before, which is the electrical generation. We could use a solar panel, which would be slightly lighter, but we're going to use the RTG just because it's very convenient. We won't have to think about it again. It just sits there and generates power no matter what the conditions are. And we're going to tilt it down so it takes less, up, less space up in the cargo bay and offset it out a bit so it's not clipped into the fuel tank. Now we need one last part here. Well, we don't actually need this. This is entirely optional. But it's a cool little trick. If you put a small nose cone reverse on the back of your rapier engine, your craft will actually be slightly more aerodynamic and it's actually enough to offset the weight of the nose cone. This is not a huge difference. You don't have to do it but I think it makes the engine look pretty cool. Now the way it's placed here it'll work until you use the gimbal on the rapier engine at which point it'll burn off the nose cone. To prevent that from happening we're going to offset it to make it smaller and now you'll be able to gimbal around with the engine without blowing the nose cone off the back. Again, this is not a big difference but it's enough of a difference to be worth doing. Now the biggest mistake people make with space planes is forgetting to consider the balance of the plane. We want the center of lift to be behind the center of mass like it is here, but we don't want it to be that far behind the center of mass. If it's farther behind the center of mass, you're less maneuverable, and you also need to use more control input all the time just to keep the nose up. This makes you less aerodynamic, makes you lose more fuel. The closer you can get that to the center of mass, the more fuel efficient you're going to be on the way up. The other thing you need to consider is we don't just need to be stable on the way up, we also need to be stable when we're landing on the runway. So let's get all of these tanks empty and we're going to make sure that the craft is balanced with empty fuel tanks. I should note I had forgotten to put liquid fuel in the wings before so we'll need to remember to do that. We can see this is with no fuel in it we don't need monoprop for this mission so we can actually leave that out and we're also not going to be coming down with our payload so let's take our payload out for now and we can see we are fairly well balanced I could put this closer but I'm gonna leave it here because this will just make sure that we're very stable and we won't have to worry about flipping around Now we have the payload in and we're going to fuel up and see how we look with a full tank of fuel.
and we can see that we are stable both without fuel and with fuel. This is actually somewhat unusual that this happens this way because generally with most base planes, when you run out of fuel, the center of mass moves backwards. This is because your engines are almost always on the back of your plane. So as it goes empty, the engines become a more significant fraction of the weight and your center of mass moves backwards and then you become unstable when you're trying to land. The reason this is stable is that the cockpit is a very significant fraction of the weight and it's counterbalancing the engine. With larger designs, you generally have to get very creative to make your craft stable. You either have to put engines on the front or land in reverse or come up with some kind of crazy solution. Or you can just put the center of lift farther back, but as I said, that does cut into your efficiency. So this is just about good. We just have a couple things that I have forgotten to do. We want our rudder to be only used for yaw. And our elevators are not going to be used for yaw. We're going to put the brakes on the back all the way up. This will just make it easier to land. We could do this later, but easier to do it now when we're thinking about it. The location of the front landing gear is not that critical, but the location of the rear landing gear is. Obviously, we want it in back of the center of mass, but we want it close enough to the center of mass that we're able to rotate on the runway and take off. Now, I've just realized I've almost forgot to put in the air intake. We're going to use the adjustable radial intake because it is the lightest. Doesn't really matter where this is as long as it's facing forward. I'll put it there. And we also need to hotkey everything. I'm going to use the hotkeys that I'm most familiar with, which is the rapier engine toggle on one. It needs to be able to switch mode to the closed cycle. I'll put that on two. The intake will go on three. And I'm going to put the gimbal toggle. We, I probably won't even use this this mission, but I'm going to put that on five. Feel free to use whatever numbers you want to. And I'm also going to hotkey the solar panels in this. Again, I probably won't even use the cargo here. I'll just drop it off just to show that we can. But we might as well hotkey it. One more loose end. Let's uh, go to the rapier engine and turn off automatic switching. We want to decide when it switches over, just because it's a good habit to be in. And this is everything. We're still at 16 and a half tons, so we'll, this will be able to very easily fly into orbit. Looking at the fuel, I can already tell that we have more than enough. We'll have no trouble getting into orbit, and we'll probably have quite a bit of fuel left at that point. Let's make it look good. Now these wings, wings will work fine as is, but I don't like having those little gaps in there. This is not a functional issue, but it is an aesthetic issue. So I'm just going to move these wings in a little bit. This doesn't affect the aerodynamics at all. So you, if you want to leave yours as is, feel free to do so. Um, let's move the rear landing gear out a little bit, just so it's a little easier to land. Would be fine either way. That'll just make it a little more stable. And one more thing I've almost forgot to do is to include a pilot. Let's have Jeb teach the lesson today. Now craft, when they load in KSB, like to start rolling on their runway. It's a good habit to be in to turn on the brakes right away. You guys may notice I do have a couple mods that are very useful for flying SSTOs. I am going to fly this as if I don't have these, so people who, playing, who are playing along who don't have mods will be able to do fine. But I might make reference to them from time to time just to show you how useful they are. So let's turn off the brakes, throttle all the way up, hotkey 1 to start, and turn on stability. 
you might notice I'm not using the staging bar with space bar. If you are, you'll want that to be in the right order. And we're going to head down the runway until we're at about 100 meters per second, and then we're going to pitch back to take off. We don't want to do that that violently, or we might tail strike on the way out. Make sure to retract the landing gear. And we're going to stay about level until we're going about 300 meters per second. By doing this, we allow the rapier engine to pick up more thrust. The faster you're going, the more thrust the rapier engine is going to generate. If you have a craft that has even more mass per engine, you might have to get all the way up past 400, uh, 440 meters per second to be able to have enough thrust to lift. With this, 300 should be more than ample. At 300, we're going to start pitching the nose up. We don't want to do this violently and right away. That'll slow us down. We just pull up nice and gently and keep pulling up until we're at 30 degrees above the horizon. And we're going to keep climbing at this angle until we're at 8,500 meters. At 8,500 meters, we're going to set stability to prograde, at which point the nose will slowly fall and we'll start picking up a lot of speed. The reason we want to climb before we pick up a lot of speed is that at some point we do start to get a lot of loss of energy due to drag, and there's less of that at higher altitude. The rapier engine runs quite well at higher altitudes compared to the other engines, so we'll still have plenty of thrust up here. It is useful having this mod so you can see your rate of climb. It's not something that you need, but it's nice to know. That's a Kerbal Flight Engineer Redux, which I'd highly recommend. It also gives a Delta V readout, which incidentally doesn't work properly for the rapier engine, but what are you going to do? Well, it doesn't work, um, doesn't work on air breathing mode, of course. We can see we're heading about level now. Our altitude is barely changing, and we're picking up speed rapidly. The faster we go, not only will our speed be increasing, but our acceleration will be increasing as well, because the rapier engine really starts to generate more thrust. If we right-click on it, we can see the thrust that it's currently generating. Of course, the more thrust that it generates, the more fuel it uses, because it has a constant ISP, but a non-constant thrust and a non-constant fuel flow, unlike rocket engines. Now the nose is starting to climb on its own. This is because as it goes faster, it's generating more lift, and also because we're going fast enough now that the curve of the surface of Kerbin is actually quite significant. So as we fly alone, as we fly along, the planet's starting to curve away from us. So we're really already in a partial orbit. Now the limit on our speed is not due to the power of the engine, but the threat of overheating. I pitched the craft up slightly to make sure that we don't overheat in the atmosphere. If you want to put the nose all the way up to 15 degrees to really be sure that you won't overheat, feel free to do so. At this point, the rapier engine really starts to lose power. We can see our speed is starting to fall. And it's, uh, the air intake is also starting to run out of air to fully supply it, which is fine because at this altitude, the rapier engine wouldn't be generating much power anyway. At 23 kilometers, we're going to switch over to closed cycle. And I also hit hotkey 3 to close the air intake to make it slightly more aerodynamic. And we're just going to let it keep this heading for a while. We want it to keep this heading for long enough that we have enough vertical component in our speed to get us out of the atmosphere. At around 30 kilometers, we're going to set stability back to prograde because we will have already had enough vertical speed and we'll just need more horizontal speed to get into orbit. 
Our surface speed only needs to get slightly above 200 meters per second to be in a full orbit, so we're actually almost there. Compared to a conventional vertical takeoff rocket, we do a lot, we gain a lot more speed before we get to a higher altitude. So our burn in orbit to circularize will be quite small. Now if you have this mod, you can see your apoapsis in this screen. But I'm going to assume you don't, so we'll go out to the orbit map. And we'll continue to burn until our apoapsis is around 75 kilometers. 70 kilometers, of course, is the edge of space, but we're going to leave a little bit of buffer. I highly recommend having this mod. It's very useful, especially when, you, um, when you're when you really trying to push the limits of what you can do with a space plane. You really don't want to be heading out to the orbit map to check it. Check. It's very useful to have that information right in front of you. So let's, uh, let's see how we're doing on fuel. We have 382 oxidizer left, 405 liquid fuel. So we have more than enough to orbit. Let's see how much uh, delta V we're going to need to get into a circular orbit. Now I have another mod called Precise Node. This is really useful if you're doing complicated maneuvers in orbit, such as gravity assists. But we won't need it for something as simple as a low carbon orbit. So I'll do it the old school way. The beauty of the Precise Node mod is when you're setting very small burns, you can change it by a hundredth of a meter per second. I'd really, really recommend that mod. Makes life quite a bit easier. It's one of those things that really should be in the stock game. As we can see, our burn to circularize is only about 140 meters per second, which is a lot less than you're going to get with any vertical takeoff design. So uh, I grow tired of waiting, so I'm just going to put it on. Uh, physics warp. You might notice my physics warp is also faster than four times because I have better time warp, another really great and indispensable mod that I'd highly recommend. And we're now in space. The, uh, the node appears to have an issue, so we're going to reset that because I highly doubt that we need to burn 2400 meters per second. I like getting this as accurate as possible. That looks pretty good. Estimated burn time, 8 seconds. A short burn indeed. We'll burn off the rest of the maneuver just to be close. And we have reached a stable orbit with a single stage design. Let's, uh, let's unload our cargo so we can say we've achieved something today. That shaking was a little alarming, but I think we're all good. Make sure we've cleared the bay before we uh, set up the solar panels. And there's our cargo, happily in orbit, with uh, almost 20,000 meters per second delta V. You could go on a grand tour of the Kerbin system with that, except for the fact that you wouldn't have enough solar power past Duna. So without further ado, let's get Jebediah back home. One question I get a lot is how do we land exactly at KSC from orbit? Part of this is just being on an equatorial orbit. Since we're on an exact equatorial orbit, we know we're going to at least fly over the Kerbin Space Center. So the only thing we have to figure out is 
make sure our longitude of our lat landing is proper. Now this is something just experience factors into a lot. But what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to set a node right above this little peninsula here, which sadly it's dark, which makes it harder to see. But I'll try to zoom in here so you can see which one I'm talking about. In fact, uh, before I put this video up, I'll put a little screenshot that when this is daytime that shows where I'm doing this burn so you guys can see. I've added in this clip to show exactly where the reentry burn is. It's going to be right over this little peninsula here. And we're going to do a 40 meter per second burn retrograde at that point. Doesn't really need to be precise, but I like doing things precise because why not? And let's time warp to that. Now do be aware when you set a maneuver node, this planet's spinning beneath it. So if you want to be accurate, you can see that it's actually moved to the left of the peninsula. At least I, ho I hope you can see. So we're just going to fly a little farther. And honestly, this doesn't really need to be that exact because we can always correct ourselves on the way down. So let's get this burn over with. So we're going to turn retrograde. and 40 meters per second. Close enough. At this point our goal is to glide all the way to the KSC and to land on the runway without using any engines. Since this is a small craft this should be fairly straightforward to do. You can always use the engines if you need to and that won't use that much fuel because they are air breathing. We can consider any fuel we have at this point to be extra fuel and if you've flown well you should have quite a bit of it. Now before we head back down into the atmosphere, we do have some time to kill. So in that time, let's calculate exactly how much delta V we have remaining. Turbo Flight Engineer Redux does not currently work properly for the Rapier engine. Either that or there's an up update out there for it and I just haven't gotten it yet. But uh, you can always calculate delta V yourself, which is more reliable anyway. You take the natural log of your current total mass, which is 8,501 kilograms, Divide that by your empty mass, which is just the mass after you burn the fuel. So this much, this mass minus the mass of the fuel burned, multiplied by 9.81 meters per second squared, multiplied by the specific impulse, which is 305. I am calculating the mass of the fuel from the 315 oxidizer, because we'll have more than enough liquid fuel. So the oxidizer is the critical component. And typing that all in, I get 1,229 meters per second. That's actually enough delta V to go to the moon or the moon and Minmus. If, uh, if you have a lot of fuel remaining and are good with orbital maneuvers or just want to go ahead and give it a try, feel free to do so. I'm not going to bother with that mission because that's not part of our parameters, but if, uh, if you do manage to do so, let me know. There's no reason why you couldn't. You won't be able to land there. You won't have enough delta V for that, but you can um, fly over to the moon and just um, do a rendezvous. I would. Um, you d you you will not have enough delta V to go to a low orbit, so don't do it unless you have uh, unless you have much more fuel remaining than I do. In which case, great job. Although I am not sure there's enough room in the craft to have that much more fuel. Let's fast forward a little bit. Once we get in the atmosphere, I'm going to leave it set to prograde. Technically, if, if you're NASA and you're doing the most efficient way, you'd calculate it out so you could have the nose set above prograde the whole way down. But that'll take too much time, and plus I want to fast forward through some of this. Again, I'm using better time warp that allows me to put physics warp up to nine times as opposed to just four times. 
Of course, if you don't want to get the mod, you can always just uh, run it at a slower speed, but uh, I'm going to do this so I can finish before my friends evolve into birds. Now, with such a small design, even if we had gotten the uh, spot of the uh, the burn entirely wrong, we'd still be able to correct it on the way down. Because once we pitch the nose up and down, it'll have a really significant effect on our approach. We can see right now we're our periapsis is still at 27 kilometers. So if there was no air, we would never land. We can also see our periapsis is well to the right of Kerb and Space Center. So if we just let it head on this path, it would uh, it would definitely overfly the Kerb and Space Center. So once we get close, we're going to have to intentionally make it slow down more quickly. We are nearing 40 kilometers, so I'm going to take it off fast forward. Once at an altitude of 40 kilometers, I'm going to set the nose upwards. At first, at least, we need to make sure we're not overheating. Now another nice thing about this mod is that it shows us the heat of the critical part. You, these uh, little heat bars will kind of show you what's going on, but it's very useful to have this because we can see exactly how close we are and know if, know if you need to pull the nose up to not keep falling so quickly or know, uh, know how close to death you are. Although I, I suppose sometimes it's better not to know. Now, with the nose up like this, we're actually going to see our altitude start to climb again. And although we want to actually, end in the long run, land more quickly rather than too slow, this is fine because we're braking quite quickly. So we're losing orbital speed at a higher rate. Once we start climbing again, let's put the nose below prograde. Because we do want to keep falling because, as I mentioned, we are at risk of overshooting the Kerbal Space Center, and we don't want to do that. So we'll leave it at this until our altitude starts dropping again. And once that's falling at a fairly decent rate, we'll put the nose back. And pulling the nose up and down here is pretty much the best way to lose speed quickly when you're re-entering. If you leave the nose up, you eventually start climbing again, and then you have less drag and you're not going to land as soon. If you leave the nose below prograde, you'll start falling so quickly that you'll quickly go into the lower atmosphere and, and die. And um, Kerbal funerals are, are pretty expensive, so let's not kill any more of them than we absolutely have to. We're starting to climb again, so let's put the nose down. And if you're playing along with me still, which I, I thoroughly hope you are, None of, none of this, these exact maneuvers are critical in exactly when you do them. Uh, the only critical point is that you're not falling so quickly that you're going to burn up and die. If you have this nice vertical speed readout, just try to make sure that doesn't go below 100 meters per second. And you don't really want to be climbing again. If you miss and go too far, this is small enough that it's quite easy to turn around you have more than enough maneuverability to just pull the craft all the way around. And we have quite a bit of liquid fuel left, so you can always fire up the engine and fly over to the runway if you really need to. But uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, achieve, it's its own achievement to have successfully completed a full glide to the runway and an unpowered landing. And I thoroughly recommend that you all try to. Now, I haven't actually taken a look at the orbital view in a while. I have a feeling that we're still overflying it. Now, I'm, I'm wrong, guys. Um, let's, uh, let's keep this a little bit above prograde. I suppose we've lost quite a bit of speed. I didn't see how slow we're actually going. We're at a 1600. But we still should have enough speed if we are a little bit above prograde to glide all the way over there. You'll see that the uh, the landing spot, as seen on the orbital map, is actually going forward, not backwards, because of our use of aerodynamics. I 
as I said before, if, uh, if this is too far west, you can always fire up the engine and fly more. If you're well past it, what I would recommend doing is pull hard up until you're climbing. Turn the plane over and just pull hard down and um, or you can just go sideways. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll throw in an extra clip here to show uh, the easiest way to turn around. From here, we should be able to do it all visually. And as soon as we've gone forward a little bit more, we'll actually be able to see the Kerbal, uh, Kerbal Space Center. Now, when you're, um, if you're doing some kind of crazy, huge, enormous single staged orbit and you're landing it, you, uh, you very often have to figure out the landing approach from the get-go. You have to know exactly what you're doing before you even do it. And the easiest way to do that is just try a landing. If you overshoot, do the burn earlier. Keep track of how much difference you need to make. And just um, find your accuracy through trial and error is the easiest way to do it. But the more you do it, the better intuition you'll get for where you have to do the burn. And the better you'll get at correcting the landing location as you come down. And eventually it'll just be second nature. So let's let's lose some speed. We're just gonna pitch up and down here to lose a little bit of speed. Now that critical thermal percentage might seem high, but it's kind of deceptive because that is the uh internal temperature, not the skin temperature. It's generally the skin temperature that blows you up. The um internal temperature tends to, as it gets close to its maximum, just transfers the heat to other parts. And it's it's very unusual to see yourself blow up from it. In fact, I, I can't say I remember actually seeing that happen. We are nearing the KSC and we're still heading at about 800 meters per second. To slow down a bit more, we're going to first pitch hard up. And then back down again. You can see we lost more than half our speed there. We also want to line up side to side. The best way to steer is by rolling. So we want to steer left. We're going to roll left and then pull up. That pulls us right around. Steering with yaw is highly ineffective. It's tempting to do, but it does not work. Barely at all. This causes yourself more instability and headache than actual turning. You actually don't even have to pull up. Just, um, just yawing, uh, not yawing, um, rolling from side to side will steer you if you need to do very fine adjustments. Now we want to land at around 100 meters per second. I have not tested this aircraft. I have a feeling that its stall speed would be well below 100 meters per second. So that'll be a safe speed. It'll be faster than we need to. If you want to try landing it at the highest speed possible because you're a Yahoo, go for it. And if you're falling much below 100 meters per second, it, you may want to fire up the engine just to gain some speed. I can see already that I'm probably going to have some excess speed, which is why I'm flying low early, because when I pull up, I'll lose some speed. Landing gear would be helpful. I'm actually going to need to lose some more speed than I am. So we're just going to pitch hard up and down. You can see here, I'm just going to roll. I'm not even pulling back. On, actually, I am going to pull back because we do need to steer a little more. Line up with the runway. And a nice gentle landing. And there we go. We have gone to space. We've reached a stable orbit. 
we brought Jebediah with us and we unloaded a ion probe. We did this all with a single stage and we recovered all our parts and we will have received 100% of the value of the parts because we recovered it on the runway. To everyone who played along, I hope your mission was also successful. If you had any trouble or questions, please let me know. And if you have any suggestions, comments, or things that you'd like to see in the future, let me know as well. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned.